Tangent. Hey Wicked Army, Wicked here and welcome to 13 Things That Players Hate In Clash Royale. Don't get me wrong, I love the game to bits and enjoy playing it, but sometimes things that happen or exist in the game that is a bit frustrating or makes your blood boil. I was going to make this video months ago, but my fellow content creator Havoc Gaming already have done a series on this topic, but I thought I'd make my own. YOLO. Before I get on this video, remember to enter my monthly giveaway, which is a whopping $200 Supercell store credit by liking, subscribing, and grabbing more entries through the Gleam link in the description below. The more entries, the better chance of you winning at the end of the month. Onto the video, let me know in the comments what do you hate in Clash Royale that could be added to this video, and if you can relate to any of the 13 things I mentioned in this video, also let me know. With that being said, let's get started. Number one are emoji emote spammers. Sure there's a mute button, but sometimes when you just want to move on to the next battle quickly, you often forget to mute the opponent. Some players use this as a tactic to play with the enemy's head to get them to rage quit. But there's just some emoji spammers that just do it because they're most likely really young and immature and don't get much attention at home, so they have to bully other players to feel good about themselves. You'll find most of these players have superior card levels and hang around in lower arenas to boost their egos. So number two are the Elite Barbarians. Some say it takes no skill to use Elite Barbarian decks, but what I really mean to say about Elite Barbarians is that don't you hate when you have deployed something heavy like a Golem or a Pekka on one lane, the opponent surprises you with the Elite Barbarians on the other lane and they reach a tower and are destroying it and you can't do anything about it because you have no elixir and cheap enough cards to distract them. This makes me rage so much. Number three, no connection symbol. So you have perfect reception or full Wi-Fi bars. You're totally dominating an opponent in the arena. Suddenly the Wi-Fi symbol comes up when you're one spell away from winning. A few seconds go past and the no connection symbol is up even though your other devices work perfectly fine with your internet connection. Then suddenly the game resumes and to your horror your opponent has already surrounded your king's tower for a three crown. Then they emoji spam you, thinking they have made the biggest comeback ever. Great. Number four, rocket fails. This is self-explanatory. Chief Pat is a master of this. Even I do it a lot. It is quite common, so for all of you players that have used a rocket and have hit nothing but ground, there's a helpline that you can call. 1-800-LEARN-TO-ROCKET. But in all seriousness though, we hate that we missed because we just wasted six elixir. Number five is upgrading costs. Let's use common cards for upgrading. For example, the pattern goes five gold, 20, 50, 150, 400, 1000, 2000, 4000, and even 8000. Then it goes to a whopping 20,000 gold minimum. I'm not good at math, but for a free to player to get to max level with all their cards that they have, it would take them years. This cost of gold to upgrade diminishes the dreams of free to play players high up in the ladder. Best card in the game, the credit card. Cha-ching. Number six is overleveled Royal Giant. So Royal Giant isn't too much of a threat in its torment standards when it's only level nine, but because it is a common card, you can request a ton of Royal Giants each time, meaning low level players can upgrade their Royal Giant to max level. Max level Royal Giants are super strong with more HP and damage, not impossible to defeat, but definitely annoying and rage quit worthy when you are losing. Number seven are the new card release times. During the first couple of card releases, sneak peeks would go out and new cards were released one at a time with only a couple of weeks apart. The latest batch of new cards were very sporadic in the releases, with no warning signs of when the cards were going to be released until a new card challenge appears. The thing players hated was that there was so much hype for new cards that when it took months to release, then all the hype was pretty much gone. Number eight, clan chess participation. Clan members that cannot accumulate at least one crown for the clan chess, and they wonder why they were kicked from the clan. Don't be that guy, be a team player, get some crowns, capiche? Number nine are 2v2 battles. Don't you hate it when your clanmates are busy and you have to hit the quick match battle in 2v2 and you get paired up with a random. 
Everything is going fine during the battle, suddenly without warning, your teammate leaves a match, leaving you to face the opponents by yourself and getting 3 ground. Supercell needs to implement player reputation added to their profiles. They start off with 100 points. If they leave during the matches in 2v2, they lose points. If they fall below, say, 50 reputation points, they are banned from 2v2 matches for a certain period of time, and the 2v2 button goes grey until they build up reputation. So they can build up reputation by completing matches in 1v1 or locked out of 2v2 for say at least 7 days then your reputation is back to the minimum so you can now go back to 2v2 battles if you wish. If you normally complete matches anyway even if you're losing 2v2 you should never have to lose reputation points. Should we have reputation points in Clash Royale to minimize players from quitting on you in 2v2. Number 10 are the chess slots. Don't you hate the lack of chess slots where we're only limited to 4 in Clash Royale? Sometimes when you're trophy pushing or clan chess pushing, all those victories going to waste without accumulating any chess. Clash Royale should add more so we can accumulate more or give us a feature where we can cancel a lower tier chess in hopes for a better chess to drop while we're playing. In number 11, following from number 10, this has to be one of the oldest complaints about Clash Royale is that the time it takes to open chess. 3 hours minimum for just the silver chess and just goes on from there. I think they should reduce the times of opening chests, just like Clash of Clans reducing the time of training troops. Number 12, bring the wrong deck into battle. This is a thing I've done on many occasions because of the different game modes, 1v1 ladder, 2v2 challenges. It's easy to hit that battle button and find out you have a troll deck you were using in 2v2 that doesn't work in 1v1 when you're trying to push for trophy. In the entire match you're just hoping for at least a tie so you don't lose trophies so you can finish the battle and select the right deck. In number 13 is the cancel button. I swear this cancel button should not even exist. More often than not as soon as you press it, it still brings you into battle anyway. Sometimes as a force of habit to hit the battle button, Clash Royale needs to implement a second screen saying that are you sure you want to play another match? especially in the ladder where you could lose trophies. That is the 13 things players hate in Clash Royale. Let me know if any of these things mentioned you can relate to and please let us know if anything should be added to the list. Maybe I'll do a part 2. Remember to enter my monthly giveaway in the Gleam link in the description below. With that being said, stay wicked.